The Road Dog is a film where a stand-up comedian gets a second chance at life when he reconnects with a son he never knew. Greg Liana, uh, he a director, writer, and producer of the film. He also got his big break in the business as the creator of Meet the Parents and, and, and a writer of Meet the Fockers. We also have co-writer Tony Boswell here, who got his inspiration from the film from his own life. Uh, thank you both so much for your time today. Thanks for having me. You're us. welcome. Yeah. Uh, uh, Greg, let's first and, and, and chat with you a little bit about the inspiration of the film uh, and what we're uh, what we're going to see. Well, uh, both Tony and I uh, were in the trenches of stand-up comedy in the the boom years, the eighties and and early nineties. And uh, you know, it started it was uh, we were talking about a comedian that we both knew who was a major alcoholic. And the fact that he, he kind of got back into stand-up comedy after uh, getting sober and just wasn't funny anymore. And so we decided to uh, to write a story about that using, you know, the, the, the world has never been really accurately uh, depicted, you know, the world of stand-up comedy. And we wanted to write something that was true to life and, and true with what's what's happening now in the in the field. Yeah, I mean, especially, you know, when you think of, of a stand-up comic, especially one who travels, is that you might be going to cities you don't know. You might be staying late at the club. Uh, you might try to network with other comedians. And booze is kind of all around you. That becomes your life if this is, what you know, when you're traveling all that much. Uh, Tony, tell me a little bit about the character of Jimmy, maybe drawing a little bit on your career and the inspiration for some of those uh, storylines. Well, like Greg said, well, you know, we both started in Chicago in the early stand-up days and like Jimmy, I, you know, I spent 30 years on the road and fortunately I've been sober for 16 years, but you know, this is almost a, a what might have been story for me. So, you know, I think it was important for us to show it realistically and truthfully for people that are struggling so that they might get a sense that there's some hope out there. For both of you, while you were um, in like the, the heart of it of your of your state of career because obviously you know you put your name out there like i'm going to be at this club and you know in this storyline we have a, a guy who gets his son who's like hey i saw you were in town but like did you have old like friends from high school you know random neighbors like just random people would kind of come up because they knew where you were like does this happen often? Had, maybe not to you but also maybe to other comedians that you saw yeah i've had that happen yeah i had my <laughs> My, sure. my elementary school principal showed up one time and then I was running through my head like what swear words did I say when I was on stage? <laughs> you, you still get scared. I know like sometimes you yeah. run into someone from day you're like, am I dressed okay? Did I say the right thing? You know, That's how right. am I, you know, yeah. You think about all those things. The worst is knowing people in the audience. My dad showed up at a show like a hundred miles away from home and sat in the front row center seat so like the entire show, I'm playing to my dad instead of the rest of the people. That yeah, I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't let my parents come. They didn't. They didn't see me until I opened up for Connie Francis. <laughs> my mom. My mom loved Connie Francis, so I said, "Okay, oh, you can go to that show," but I wouldn't let him go at a at a comedy club. You're, you're like just that one, and that's it. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, the movie's coming out on October 6th on DVD and video on demand. But up this upcoming weekend, we're going to get to see it at the Pickwick Theater in Park Ridge. You're going to do a QA and a with the, with the cast on Friday and Saturday. One of the, the uh, performances already sold out. Uh, but talk a little bit about reconnect. You mean, because Greg, you're from Park Ridge. Talk a little bit about having this experience and getting to show your film there at the theater. Yeah, well, we, uh, you know, we shot a lot of it in Park Ridge. Uh you know, walking distance from the Pickwick is half our locations. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's fitting that we do it at the Pickwick. You know, we, we had our very first screening when we just finished shooting, which was very rough. We had it at the Pickwick. So, you know, it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be fun. Tony, I, I want to you know, ask you one more question about your about your sobriety. Mm -hmm. Given your your journey how did you feel about writing the story? Did it feel like a full circle moment getting to watch the, the first draft of it? I mean, what did it feel like to be able to put, you know, cause I think you have your stories, but to be able to write it down, see it on screen. I mean, what was that experience like uh, for you? Yeah. I mean, it was <clears throat> very personal. It, you know, one thing I remember we wrote this several years before we shot it, you know, the first draft. And there was a scene where one of the characters talks about their 15 year sobriety and we actually shot that on my 15th anniversary 
it was just the the serendipity of all of that mm-hmm. happening coincidentally on the same day it was it was amazing that, that's awesome. wanna, I, I want to say that we there's a lot of truth in this script we yeah. we jimmy is a composite of of a lot of people and so right. is is david uh you know, but we everything in the movie is basically true or, you know, rooted in reality. What Greg said earlier, I, we can't overlook. No one has depicted the road comic lifestyle as accurately as we did, I think, in this movie. So if you want to know what it's like to be a comedian, if you want to talk your children out of becoming a comedian, maybe have them see this. <laughs> But it's also a human story too. We didn't want to just make a, a stand-up comedy movie. It's a, I think it's a very relatable. A lot of people will see themselves in in uh, Jimmy and the story. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that's also pretty much, you know, any career is that you get to see the glamorous part for the thirty minutes that the comedians on stage, but you don't get to see the other twenty-three hours of what life's like when that person's not on stage. But there also yeah. was a comedy boom that went on in the 80s and 90s, as we said. And it's, it's a lot different now. There's a lot less clubs. A lot of these clubs have closed. And uh, it's, it's gotten a lot harder, I think, to, to make a living as a comedian. I mean, one guy that we get to see in, in Chicago a lot is Calvin, Calvin Evans. We also get to see Greg Fitzsimmons gets to, comes to Chicago a couple times a year. Patty Vesquez is a staple here in our city. Uh, Doug Stanhope. I mean, talk a little bit about working with them. Did you reach out to them? Are you always like, connected with the Chicago scene and we're like, all right, let's, let's work on this film together. Yeah. We, uh, you know, we saw Doug in, in a show, uh, Louis CK had called Louis and he, he did one episode and he was just brilliant in it. And that's why we, uh, actually offered it to him. And, and I have to say that he is just one of the best actors that I've ever worked with. And I've worked, I directed Kathy Bates and, and Danny DeVito and he, he was good from the first read through every take. He's just a really very good actor. Greg, I do want to ask you a little bit about Meet the Parents. And, you know, this was a time before social media and, and viral success. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, about that driving force, because these projects, especially getting that type of success, you know, don't happen, you know. And I mean, obviously now people have millions of followers on social media and they can do some, you know, something similar, but not maybe to that level. But talk a little bit about your driving force and making the short, you know, WTTW, um, turning it into indie film and just how it all kind of snowballed and, and kind of came together. All right, here's the story. I, I used to make short films while I was doing stand-up comedy. I made a short film about five minutes long called The Vase. And in it, I, I, I went to meet my girlfriend's parents and I broke their prize vase. And I had this idea for turning it into a feature. And I, I was friends at the time with Emo Phillips, who was uh, a very well-known comedian at the time, you know, uh, and still is. And, you know, I told him the idea and he said, well, that sounds really funny. You know, I, I said, I'd, I'd like to make a, a feature where just the everything goes wrong. This is one weekend of this guy's life. And he said, that, that's funny. He said, if you write the script, if I like it, I'll put money into it. So I wrote it with uh, a writer named Mary Ruth Clark, and we we made this feature. And we did it for thirty thousand dollars, and it ended up playing the Music Box and the Pickwick. It played it at one time, but Steven Soderbergh ended up seeing my film and called me up and said, "This should be a studio film." He said, "Everyone in the world can relate to this," you know. So he took it into Universal, and they bought it and remade it. So the film, the Meet the Parents that everyone knows, is a remake of my film which they won't let me release. <laughs> it's, in a, it's in a safety vault somewhere, right? Yeah, it's uh, very heavily guarded by uh, crocodiles. And, <laughs> but they uh, there, there actually is a book that I didn't write, but it's coming out. It's called The Meet the Parents Story, uh, you know, that tells the whole story from my little indie film to the, to the, uh, the mega hit. And that's coming out, I think, in December from Bear Manor Press. Written by a talented writer named Laura Enright. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. something to look so for. Look, holiday gift. Look out for that. It's a cautionary tale. <laughs> I was also fascinated by a quote that I read from you um, once that during a premiere of The Guy Thing, that Barbara Streisand was sitting near you and you were still having a miserable time because you weren't enjoying that. Like, how do you, like, enjoy the, your movie how do you critique yourself but then maybe other people are around and especially 
maybe someone, you know, an icon like, like Barbara Streisand, and then you're not like having a good time. I don't know. Tell me a little bit well, about that. I just, that was my favorite script. And it just, to me, it just got ruined. They, they hired 10 of the writers after I finished it. And uh, it just, I just hated it. And I was sitting in the theater just cringing. And yeah, Barbara Streisand was in the seat behind me. And I, I don't know, I, I didn't even want to go to the after party because I just was embarrassed by it. But uh, that's, that's one that reason. Party? What's that? Did you end up just saying, okay, I'm going to go to the after party or no? No, I went home. <laughs> yeah. But I, uh, that's one of the reasons I really want to get back to the indie film world. I would rather make small films that I'm, I can be proud of than uh, high profile films that 10 writers got a hold of. And, you know, and I look back at the stuff that I like the most that I've done, and it's the indie stuff. You know, it's the stuff I've called the shots on, like My well, Meet the that, Parent. Well, that's amazing because people are going to definitely love love this movie, uh, The Road Dog. Tony, Greg, thank you so much for your time today. Catch it at the Pickwick. Go ahead and get those thank tickets you. early because some of the performances or some of the screenings are already starting to, to sell out uh, at the Pickwick and then video on demand October 6th and as well on uh, DVD. And uh, thank you both so much for your time today. Thank, thank you. you.